y'all, my name is Dasha. I'm also known as the hair doula and today we are going to do a one hour wash day. That is going to include shampooing, deep conditioning with heat, detangling, and a quick style at the end, a quick wash and go. So um, stay tuned. I really wanted to show y'all that wash day does not have to take 50 bazillion hours. It doesn't have to be a whole day. You can get it in, get it done, and be on with your busy, busy life. Because I know we all got things to be on. I got things to do. I hope that y'all love it. Stay tuned. It's going to be one continuous shot. Let's jump right in. First, oh my gosh, it feels so weird being in here with the swim suit. I'm just gonna wet my hair thoroughly. My hair is low porosity, so sometimes it takes some time to get it really saturated. I don't start off with any sections because my hair is usually like a little bit tangled on wash day. So I just kind of We'll do some really light finger detangling, just splitting it up, making sure the water's getting in between all my hair and getting in my scalp. I'll kind of do it in half. All right, babe, you said you're gonna wash and condition in five minutes. Well, put the deep conditioner in. I'm still going for a full deep condition though. And washing is pretty quick. I don't like to leave. So today I'm gonna to be doing a clarifying this uh, clarifying shampoo because it's been a little while since I've clarified my hair. Clarifying really just makes sure that you're getting all the gunk and all the dirt off. And I'm doing right now just praying hands, getting some of those shed hairs out. It's quick and easy way. Nothing major. Just praying hands, dragging my fingers through it a little bit, and getting some of those shed hairs out. It'll make detangling later on a lot easier if you get some of those out now. Um, I don't know about y'all, but I take my shed hairs and I stick them on the wall. And if I forget to get it, it drives my fiance crazy. So. But I don't do my cleanup until after my wash day. The wash time is over. All right. So my hair is saturated. Um, I'm using this My Curl Products Clean Slate today. It's a clarifying shampoo. And it's a foam, which I really love. And I'm just going to apply directly to my scalp. To my scalp. Because that's where the main focus is when you're shampooing, is your scalp. And so make sure you get that scalp good. Sure, I look like a super sexy, super bubbly. Now oh, you look like you got two minutes left. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> so use the pads of your fingers, not your nails, because if you use your nails to scrub your scalp, you can damage it, you damage the hair follicles, and that's how your hair grows. So you don't want to do that. And also make sure that you're paying attention to and getting the center of your scalp as well. Probably about a minute and a half. So we're gonna go ahead and rinse this out. Gonna lightly kind of drag it down. And as the shampoo gets rinsed out of your hair, then it's gonna really clarify the rest of your hair.
Make sure you're rinsing and getting it all out. just to make sure I'm getting in the in-between because as you can probably see there's like no new conditioner right there in the in-between right here. detangling going on here. All this is going to help make the detangling process go a lot faster, which I know is the part that a lot of people dread when doing their hair. I learned this. Leave your hair loose so that the heat can really penetrate all the way through it. Don't put it in a bun or anything. I used to put mine in a bun and it wasn't penetrating my hair properly. Okay. Time to zoom. It's time to get it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Get hype. Get hype. At the eight and a half minute marker. Minutes. So what what time are we at right now? We're at eight, almost nine minutes, eight minutes fifty five seconds. Okay, so once we get to nineteen minutes, we'll say twenty minutes, then we'll go back and start rinsing and detangling. But so this is my what is it? Golden hot, my golden hot heat cap. It's got multiple heat levels. There's low, medium, high. 
and then of course there's off, you know, because you gotta turn it off at some point. I always have my own high when I'm deep conditioning. This is literally the only thing that I use as heat pad for is deep conditioning. So, um, for me, using heat to penetrate, to make sure that the deep conditioner is penetrating my hair is really important. Anyone with low porosity hair, I recommend you using heat to penetrate. And if you don't have a heat cap right now, um, all throughout college I didn't have a heat cap. But what I would do is I would put on the plastic cap and then over the plastic cap I would put a hat and over the hat I might wrap a towel just so that all the heat was getting trapped um, in my hair and I wasn't, uh, and I was still getting some type of heat to decondition my hair. So also fun fact, when you are using heat to decondition your hair, it doesn't take as long for the product to penetrate so you don't have to decondition as long. So if I'm not using heat, then I would normally walk around with this on my head for like an hour. But while we're sitting here for the next couple of minutes, I'm going to give y'all some tips to a quick wash day. I wrote them out right here just for y'all. So number one, prep ahead of time. Make sure that you have your products ready. Make sure that you have your tools ready. Um, and make sure that your whatever previous style you had, make sure that you've already taken it down. You can even take it down the day before um, and maybe you know put some oil on it if you want to or just take it down the day before so you don't have to take it down the same day as wash day. So you're just ready to start off washing your hair. And then having your tools and all your products ready to go and where they need to be means that you're not having to fumble through and search through everything with your hair dripping or whatever in order to you know have your stuff that you need in order to have a smooth wash day so even if you're making something homemade make it before if you're making your deep conditioner make it before if you're making a mud treatment make it before make everything before so that once you start you can just go through nice and smooth tip number two this is something that i learned pre-pooing is optional you do not have to pre-poo, especially every single wash day. So pre-pooing is when you moisturize your hair ahead of time. So it is optional, you don't have to do it. Um, I guess in a way you could say I pre-pooed, but I just kind of like re-moisturized my hair like two days ago and then wore a style and then decided to wash it today because I was ready to wash it and needed to be washed. But you do not have to pre-poo, you can start off at shampoo. Um, which kind of brings me to my next point is deep condition after detang, I mean detangle after deep conditioning. This is extremely helpful. I used to detangle before I even washed my hair. And then I felt like I had to wash my hair in sections and I had to decondition my hair in sections and I had to detangle my hair in sections. That's too much. That's a whole lot of work that you don't have to do every single wash day. I know you see it all the time on YouTube. It's not necessary, you don't have to do that. So if you wash your hair and then you put the deep conditioner in and do some light finger detangling along the way, then by the time you go rinse that deep conditioner out, your hair is soft, it's, re it's malleable, it's moisturized, and it's ready to be um, detangled more easily. So detangle after you deep condition. Babe, what's the time looking like? We got 12 minutes, 55 seconds. Oh, beautiful. Next. Yes, you are. Oh my God. <laughs> mm. Next. Mm. Babe, stop. Leave me alone. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, number four, plan your style. So I already know what style I'm doing with my hair. I'm planning on doing a wash and go. I have somewhere to go tonight, so I want nice, big, plump, juicy curls. If I can manage a big fro, then I'm going to make it happen. And so plan your style ahead of time. If you know what style you're gonna be doing, then you know how your wash day needs to end. So for example, if I was doing, uh, planning on wearing a style um, that required me to stretch my hair, then I know that, okay, at the end of wash day, I need to have, you know, braids in my hair, like four braids, so that my hair can dry like that and it can be stretched. If I know that, the end of my wash day, I am doing a wash and go, then I need to have my wash and go tools and products out and ready to go. And, um, you know, if you use a blow dryer, blow dryer. If you use a hooded dryer, hooded dryer. Whatever. If you just walk away and are chilling, then you know that you're gonna be walking around with wet hair for a while, and that's cool. So know what it is that you're doing with your hair. Know what style, have that picked out already before you start your wash day. 
um, search YouTube, search things that I offer you, search whatever it is you want to search ahead of time so that you're not like chilling in a weird random time figuring out what you're going to do with your hair after your wash day's done and your hair's all dry now because you've been looking through YouTube after you finished your wash day and now you got to re-wet it and try to re-moisturize it and do all this. Don't just pick out your hairstyle before your wash day started and you'll be all good. And then last, and I mentioned this while I was washing my hair, clean up after yourself. Say it again. At the end, no, 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 that wasn't my point. Mm -mm. Yeah, it is. At the end of wash day. So that means I just washed my hair. All my hair is still in there. And that's okay, because guess what? I'm about to get back in the shower and detangle my hair, and more hair is going to be in there. So what I'm going to clean the bathroom for right now well, I'm going to just be right back in the shower. That's a waste of time. So clean up after yourself after your wash day is complete. So you only have to clean up one time. All my hair is in there. It's on the wall. Some of it fell off the wall. It's on the floor. It's okay. We have a thing to catch hair. And it'll be all good. It'll be cool. It'll be great. Clean up at the end. And do clean up. Because if you have somebody else that's using your shower, like I do. If you got a man, then. clean up after yourself. <laughs> Make sure to clean it, otherwise you might get a stare later on. She does a good job, y'all. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're at 16 minutes. Cool. So we got about four more minutes to chill and deep condition. You got any questions? Yeah. So in the process of you doing this what makes it what made you say that it's not necessarily um it's not necessary to pre-poo especially because that's one thing on youtube a lot of people preach often when it comes to moisturizing getting those proteins all this stuff in your hair like how much of an option is it really for people who are um, working to get the hair as healthy particularly as healthy as yours well i would say that every head of hair is a little bit different so if you, and, and it depends, week to week it's gonna be different. So for example, if today my hair was just like really tangled and really matted then, and really dry, I'm definitely not gonna go straight into a pre-poo. Pre-poo for me and how I use it is more to make sure that I have some type of moisture in my hair before I go and then like dry it out with the shampoo. So if your hair is like super dry and dusty and on the verge of breaking off if you, when you like touch it, then you probably need to do a pre-poo. And then another reason that you would do a pre-poo, that a pre-poo would be recommended is if, and this kind of still goes along with if your hair is really dry, is if you have um, high porosity hair and your hair sucks up a lot of moisture because if your hair is high porosity, which means your cuticles are really, really open, then that means it sucks up a whole lot of water, sometimes more water than what your hair needs. And in that case, if you are high porosity, then doing a pre-poo with just oil would be beneficial from time to time. Just oil, you're not even putting like moisture moisture in your hair, you're putting oil to help protect your hair from, um, from sucking up too much water when you then start your washing process. So those are really the times where I really recommend a pre-poo. Otherwise, if your hair is like normal and you're washing it or your hair is low porosity and you're washing it, it's really not a huge deal to pre-poo. It's just a time suck. So for me, I've been pre-pooing for a long time and then I was like, I don't even need to do this. I don't pre-poo anymore, just to be quite honest. To me, it's a waste of time. Unless my hair is extremely detangled, I mean, extremely tangled, I don't pre-poo. So you use the pre-poo as like a, a way so you can pre-finger detangle before you get to actually wash it? Yeah, and not always finger detangle. Sometimes I use tools. I need something really, really slippery. Juicy to get those tangles out, but I try not to let my hair get that. So you like make your own pre-poo? Yes, I do. Okay, can you tell us in 60 seconds what you put in your pre-poo? Yeah, marshmallow root and okra. Oh. <laughs> Where are we at on time? Well, we're at 9.15 and 19.4. Well, 
We almost at 20 minutes, y'all. So. Okay, cool. So we're gonna wrap this up. Head back to the shower. Now, with the tangling, I'm gonna go ahead and let y'all know, I sectioned my hair into four sections and I detangle by section. Um, that's very, very helpful because I have a lot of hair and if I try to detangle it in two sections or all as one, it would not work. So, I'm turning this off. Go ahead and start heading that way. Get hype. Stay hard. <laughs> Stay hard! Stay hard! <laughs> Put my towel. Put my bag on. Yes, pearls! I'm about to go ahead and divide my hair into those sections that I told you about. And they don't have to be perfect. Mine are surely not perfect. What are the sections for? For the guys that know nothing? Um, again, I use smaller sections to detangle because if I tried to detangle all my hair at once, it wouldn't work. My hair is really thick and it's really dense. I have a lot of hair. And so detangling all together would not work. So everyone needs a different amount of sections. I go into that in detail in my Build Your Own Hair Routine of product along with everything else that you need in order to make sure that your hair is well taken care of based on your specific hair profile because everyone's hair is different. So for me, four sections works. For some people, two sections would work. So what I'm gonna do is just briefly wet it just to again, get some of that moisture and slip into it. And then I'm gonna go for my detangling brush and go here. Do you always make sure you start at the ends? Yes. So I always start at the ends and work my way up to the root so that I'm not just ripping my hair out. How do you like that detangling clone? I like it a lot, actually. You got like a link for us to go get it? <laughs> yes, I do. I absolutely do. So work up and up and up. When I'm detangling, I also make sure to use warm water. This helps to work through everything a little bit easier. And again, make sure that you're getting down to your scalp. When you're detangling, that makes sure that ensures that your hair is fully detangled from ends to root. So 
So this section is thoroughly detangled. You see that I can run the brush smoothly all the way through on all sides. So what I'm gonna do is make sure all that deep conditioner is rinsed out. And then I am going to I'm gonna fancy knot it. You can also twist it. What do you feel is more effective? Um, I think they're both effective. Because even if I twisted it, I would then fancy knot it. I am just deciding to twirl it because that's a little bit faster than having to re-twist and untwist that whole section every time. So we're gonna go for the next section. Light finger detangling. smaller in the section, the easier to detangle. So if you ever find yourself in a space where you're really having trouble getting through a section, break it in half and keep it going. Break it in half and detangle those sections separately. Again, make sure that you get into the break. make sure to hold my hair here. One, so I'm not feeling that pulling on my scalp and making my scalp all sensitive and sore. And two, so I'm not ripping any of my hair out from the scalp. You really just want to get those shed hairs released and 
make sure that our hair is detangled. Getting shed hairs out is really important. The reason that getting shed hairs out is really important is because if they stay in your hair, then they're going to be tangling with all the rest of your hair, creating more knots, um, more mats, and the more that you have to cut those out, the longer it's going to take you to have the healthy, long hair that you want. So how often do you recommend uh, getting those shed hairs? So I detangle every time I wash my hair, which I don't usually on an average week. So more than on an average, uh, you know, my life is normal or even a little hectic. I don't usually go more than two weeks without washing my hair. One to two weeks, every one to two weeks. This is what I do is when I fully wash, do a wash day like this. How often do you use that clarifying shampoo? Once a month. Why? Because I use, for the most part, pretty natural products. And then when I'm not clarifying my hair, I use um, a shampoo that is a little lighter and not as harsh. I actually use this one by Original Moxie. It's called Get Clean. No foam shampoo. This one literally has no foam. And it's a lot gentler on my hair. So I still wash my hair every week. I just don't use one that's strong enough to clarify. If I clarify my hair every week, then it's gonna be really dry and really brittle and it's gonna break. Do you break down clarify? Clarify is when you use a shampoo that is a little more stripping. So over time, as you're using products, as you're using oils, butters, gels, product builds up on your hair strands. And if you do not wash that product build up off of your hair strands, then your hair will suffocate because moisture cannot get in. And so every once in a while, every two to six weeks, depending on which kind of products you use. If you're using products that have a lot of different chemicals and stuff or that are really heavy, then you might need to clarify your hair every two or three weeks. Um, whereas if you're using products that are really natural, you may only need to clarify your hair every four to six weeks. So the, nat the more natural the product is, the lighter it is on the scalp? Yes, usually. Um, not even just the lighter it is on the scalp. It's really more so um, the more natural product is, the more easy, the more water soluble it is. And so it'll wash out with just water or with a light shampoo. Whereas some things, um, you need a heavier shampoo, a clarifying shampoo to get it off your hair. And so if you want to make sure that you have moisturized hair, and that means that you need to start off with clean hair so that moisture and all the goodness that you're adding to it from those products that you're using can even get to your hair. So a very important part and step of growing your hair is shampooing, making sure you're clarifying your hair, making sure your hair is clean and ready to receive what it is that you're giving it. Mm. So washing your hair is like washing dishes. If you got a whole bunch of meat and grease that you putting in that pan, you will need some extra to, to get all the gunk off. However, if you were to just, you know, lightly saute some veggies, you know, even potentially just make some collard greens. The, the pot will get much cleaner with just water. You just add just a, a bit of soap to, you know, get a nice smell and a sure clean. That is a great example, actually, wow. Yeah. We're mostly plant-based for anyone who doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> we don't cook meat in this house. We do not cook meat in this house of any kind. Well, this is my last section. I got water in my eyes. We got 34 minutes. Ooh, Jay, I'm running ahead of schedule. I wanted this to be done by 40 minutes. 
So this is basically a, like a 30-ish minute wash day. <laughs> Less than an hour wash day. What do you think is where people, where, where do people lose most of their time when it comes to the wash day? Detangling, probably. Whenever I talk to people, one is detangling, and two, people feel like they have to have these really long, really extravagant wash days in order for their hair to be healthy. They feel like they gotta flip up inside, upside down and massage, massage their scalp for an hour. And they feel like they gotta mix up 50 bazillion things all the time and uh, mm. make, uh, make 50 recipes and mm. mix the herbs and the oils and the juices and the berries mm. and the blood of somebody's first child. <laughs> mm. <laughs> they just feel like they have to do all this extra stuff. They gotta use the rice water, they gotta... Really, that's one reason that I feel like a lot of wash days take a lot of time is because people are doing a lot of extra stuff that they really don't need to do. Mm. And then also, I think, in terms of the actual steps, detangling can take a long time. It took me, like, it took me years to master detangling. Even just knowing where to put detangling in your wash day routine is very important because it used to take me an hour to detangle my hair. Like, a literal hour to detangle my hair. And now, as you can see, it's taking me about 20 minutes, not even. So, um, just understanding technique is really important. Understanding technique is extremely important. And being able to understand your hair and what works for your hair is extremely important. What are some steps they can take to understanding their hair more? Um, well, I would recommend getting to build your own hair routine that I've put together. I've honestly not seen anything like it, which is why I had to build it myself because there's nothing out there for women to help them understand their hair and build a routine that works for their hair and find products that work for their hair. There are a lot of people who are reviewing products, um, you know, and there's a lot of people who, you know, from their own perspective, and there's a lot of people who are showing you the routines that they do for their hair, and they may or may not be trying to sell something within the video, which is cool, it's totally cool. You just never know from those kinds of videos and from that kind of contact, content, what's gonna work for your hair and what your actual hair is like. Mm. And so in the Build Your Own Hair Routine, I actually take you through very specific key elements um, that's present in everyone's hair so you can determine what your hair type and profile is. And then from there, I break down what each one of those things means in terms of your own hair routine. So that you know things like how many sections you need to have in your hair, or you know things like, what kind of product works for your hair. And it cuts down on that time that it takes to experiment. Mm. Yeah, you used to talk to me when we first got together about a lot of the time that you spent on YouTube watching how other people took care of their hair and it never really meshed up. I remember you, you also said something to the degree of that everybody has like a lot of different textures in their hair. Yes. So just because somebody may be 4B, 4C, or 3C or B, that they can have much different combinations and products and certain steps or whatever that they take could just respond differently for somebody else's hair. Yeah, so when I go through the Oh, just to make a quick note, I'm now moving on to my wash and go. So I'm adding my products now for my wash and go. But just because someone is 3C, that really doesn't tell you anything about their hair. That only tells you about how their curls are formed. It doesn't tell you any of the other very important elements of someone's hair. Um, and so none of them, <laughs> in build your own hair routine, you're not gonna see 3C, 4A, you're not gonna see any of that language at all because it really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. It, it really doesn't matter. Um, so whereas that's a great kind of place to start initially, I guess you could say, ultimately it's not going to lead you to understanding what 
products work for your hair and what methods work for your hair. You're just gonna kinda sorta, cause I'm sure y'all, I look on YouTube all the time, and everyone that I'm seeing, they, um, they could be 3C, and this person's 3C looks very different from that person's 3C, which looks very different from that person's 3C, and that's okay, cause our hair is so diverse, so beautiful, so, so, so diverse. And so what we really need to be focused on is some of those other elements that actually determine what's, how our hair behaves, how our hair reacts to moisture, products, different products, how our hair reacts to oil, all those different things is really important. Could you walk us through what you are doing right now for your wash and go? What products are you using? What order are you putting them in? And damn it, why? So, right now I'm doing a wash and go. I've actually, to be transparent, never used this combination of products for my wash and go. I wanted to try out this gel, which is not a natural gel, but that's okay. I'm using it today because um, I want to see if I can get more definition from this gel, a little bit more easier than I um, have been able to get definition with some other stuff. So I'm using natural products for what's going directly on my hair as the like leave-ins. I'm using Shape Shifter, Reforming Cream, this is also by Original Moxie. And I'm using Oasis Moisture Gel from Moxie. They're both for hair that is like dry and or thick and I really want to get a shower mirror so I can like see a little bit more clearly always like what's going on so you want to make sure that the definition is there is what I'm aiming to do and honestly for me even if definition isn't there sometimes I'm cool with it the best Time to do a wash and go is when your hair is soaking wet, because that's when your curls are popping. So once you finish one section with this, you just leave it down? Yep. I leave it down. So I thoroughly wet it. A little mini length check for anyone who wants to see. Thoroughly wet it. This is after the haircut too. I'm starting to run out of space. Put in my first product. Add in my second product. And what do those two specific products do? Moisturize. So those are gels that They're moisturize? They're leave-ins. They're leave-ins. And they also help in terms of like forming the curls. Okay. So if I was in the store, the bottle going to say moisturize. Uh, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> it depends on the product. And this gel right here is to... So this is, oh, I haven't even mentioned what this is. This is Gorilla Snot. Sounds gross. Mm -hmm. This, I'm really, I feel like this gel could be the truth. My line sister, <laughs> my line sister used to use this gel. She probably still does on her edges to keep, like to hold her edges down when she was slicking her edges. And uh, this stuff has got a whole so I feel like I might be able to get some nice stuff in It's an experiment. Look at you, letting the people be a part of the process. <laughs> yeah, photo for a minute. Nice.
When did you discover this one hour wash day process? Um, and, and what year did you start the journey to even figuring that out? <laughs> well, I guess I started the journey to figuring it out in 2012 when I first went to I I stopped in 2012 when I went natural. I was like everyone else. I was on YouTube. I was looking for the answers. You know, just trying to figure it out. And as the newness of being natural wore off, I'm just gonna put my hair in the back so that it stays separate from my hair in the front as I'm doing the front. As the newness from being natural wore off, I started to, um, and as I just got busy, because I was in college when I went natural, my freshman year in college. And as I just got busy, I started working to find alternatives because I literally did not have time to spend all day on my hair. I just don't. like. Um, back then, I was a college student. After that, I was working in, an, in, a, in an entrepreneurial in an entrepreneurial um, environment, uh, mostly a lot of times by myself, at a very small nonprofit. And so I was very busy, always in schools. I was working in Birmingham and inner city schools. And then after that, I was working in corporate environment um, in the digital marketing. School. Oh no, actually I worked in sales before that and then I worked in the digital marketing space. I, I just have very demanding jobs and positions all always when I was working. And so I didn't have time to spend a whole day on my hair. And I didn't feel like spending a whole day on my hair. I would like to spend a day relaxing as opposed to washing my hair. So I started kind of questioning some of the things that I was seeing online and Figuring out, can I do this and my hair still grow? Can I do that and my hair still be healthy? You know, what what does that look like? And that's when I started developing different processes that were faster and figuring out what worked for me and what worked for my hair. And what were the things that were really important to make sure I was incorporating? Whereas what were the things that like, yeah, like that's cool if you're having a spa day and you want to do that, but like you don't really need to do that. It's not necessary. Um, and I just found that for me, a lot of things were not necessary. So I stopped doing them. And that's really it. And I don't, I don't think that I've ever explicitly said like, oh, this wash day is one hour. But I've been like, yep, quick wash day, let's go. Keep it moving, get it over with. And then there's some more days where I'll be chilling and I'll like really treat myself and I'll watch a movie and I'll enjoy the process of pampering myself and what that self care process looks like because it is self care. Like, you know, women sit around and we talk and it's like therapy and, you know, where we relax and enjoy a scalp massage or enjoy whatever intricate style it is that we're making with our hair, because our hair is gorgeous. And other people can't really do with their hair what we have the opportunity to do with our hair. So sometimes I just revel in the really unique, cool styles that I can do with my hair. So it really all just depends on how I'm feeling, because sometimes I don't feel like washing my hair, so I do a quick wash. And some days I'm like, I'm a chill. I've been going, 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 and I need some self-care today. So I'm going to take my time and put on some music and enjoy this process. We're on the last section. Four to nine minutes. Wow, this is beautiful. I've never timed this. I've never timed this.
I continue wetting my hair throughout the process. Again, because soaking, you want your hair to be soaking wet. So that your curls are really popping. That will give you more definition. Ten minutes. Why do you say you keep wetting your hair? Definition, so my curl will pop. Your hair has the most definition and is the most smooth and plump when it's soaking wet. Are you still detangling your hair? I see you running your fingers through it. This is kind of like shingling, helping the curls to be plump and making sure that I'm getting the products through. It's less about detangling and more about making sure that the product is evenly distributed throughout all your curls. And what is shingling? This. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Small section. I don't know if you meant to graph it or not. Where? Down here? Yeah. Uh, Still some more up there. And it feels like it was from that kid. It doesn't need foot. Yeah, it was. You know what, it's actually been like three weeks since I washed my hair, hasn't it? The last time I washed my hair was before. We went to California. Yeah. But it was in braids for part of it. Oh, well I washed it in California, kind of. I wet it, I didn't wash it, but I wet it. What time are we at? We're at 52 minutes and 50 seconds. Okay, cool. So I've finished at 15 minutes. Really, right now, I'm just taking out the clips. So now that you've completed the wash day, what's next? Well, next would depend on. Well, for me personally, I'm probably gonna sit under the dryer. Um, I'm gonna go sit under the dryer. So, now that the wash today is complete, oh my gosh, I'm gonna clean, I'm gonna clean up this area, get all the hair out of everywhere. You will be showing shed hair. Let me show my shed hair. There's still some in the brush. Let me wash this off. So this is how much hair I lost. This is from three weeks of shedding. I haven't washed my hair. <laughs> That's the foam going through the um through the thing that catches the hair. But um, three weeks of shedding. I, my granny taught me to. My grandma taught me to flush my hair down the toilet so that people can't do stuff with it. <laughs> So yeah, I'm gonna clean up. I'm gonna sit under the dryer, let my hair do what it do. And um, that's it. That's the one hour wash day. Let me know what you think. What are we about to say? Stay hard.
Stay hard. Ooh. No, um. <laughs> Let me know what you think. Try it out yourself. Um, tag, uh, hashtag the hair doula if you do try it out. And I will see y'all. Oh, yes, yes. I will repost it if I see it and comment and like. Um, yeah, anything else, babe? Well, build your own hair routine because I feel like this process can become a, a lot streamlined, a lot more streamlined for everybody in their own personal life. So stay tuned or look out for um, um, on here, there's going to be a link to build your own hair routine so you can check it out and see if you think it's something that will work for you. Um, a lot of thought was put into it, especially for people who are new naturals or who still feel like they don't have a grip on their hair or who don't have time to search YouTube for five years like I did. Um, so check it out. And um, I think that's it for real this time, y'all. Thank you for watching. This has been so cool. Thank you, babe, for recording. You a real one. Um, bye, y'all. Okay, so this is me showing y'all the way that my hair came out after this one hour wash day. I actually didn't get a chance to record the first couple of days after I did this. So this is day three hair um, after a lot of fluffing on the first day because like I said, I had an event to go to and I wanted big hair. So I really love the way that it came out, clearly. <laughs> Thanks again for watching.